The Aqua Changer 240 from LEPA is designed to complement your CPU overclocks with superior thermal dissipation and performance. Dual convex blades on the 120mm fans deliver high volume airflow at low noise, and the protrusive copper plate deploys more coolant for efficient CPU hotspot elimination. Click the link in the description to find out more. How's it going guys? Kyle here with Awesome Sauce Network. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of overclocking. Nothing too serious, and uh, I wouldn't consider this a tutorial by any means, but this is more of like a, just a casual walkthrough, I guess, um, of my overclocking process that I do personally. Now everyone overclocks differently, and the way you overclock is also going to depend uh, slightly on what kind of desktop or what kind of system you're running as well. So uh, I'm overclocking right now on my, my personal desktop at home. This is the one I edit on, and this is the one that I do all of my encoding for, for all the YouTube videos that you see on the channel. So first off, I'm in the UEFI right here of the Gigabyte, uh, the Gigabyte UEFI Dual BIOS. Um, now this is a, an X99 board. I'm overclocking a 5820, uh, a 5820K. But regardless of which Haswell eCPU you might be overclocking, they all function more or less the same. So uh, you can apply whatever I'm doing here to your own Haswell eCPU if you have one. So jumping right into it, the first thing we'll see if we go to the frequency settings is the CPU base clock. Now uh, the base clock starts out at 100 megahertz by default, but you can kind of adjust uh, certain parameters to, to get you a higher clock speed. So for example, if we go to our CPU clock ratio, now you can, whatever you enter here will be multiplied by that 100 megahertz frequency and that will give you your, your final CPU frequency. So at the, just below that you can see 3.3 gigahertz right here. Now I'm gonna just start tuning things. Um, now you can either do this, you can do this a couple ways. You can either do it in increments. So you could go, you know, let's say you wanted to overclock it to 3.5. Wait, that that's not 3.5. Oh, my numlock, my numlock was on. Sorry about that. Let me change this. All right, so you can do 3.5, and uh, if you enter that, now you'll see that our new CPU frequency is 3.5 gigahertz or 3,500 megahertz. Um, so you can do it inc incrementally and just keep going up and doing stability tests every time you, you go up a notch. So you can do a stability test here, and if that passes, then you can go on to the next one, and you keep going until your system crashes. And at that point, uh, you could either leave it as is, or you could try increasing the voltage. Now, voltage basically just drives more power to the CPU, allowing you to hit those higher uh, clock speeds. However, it also generates more heat in your system and can also decrease the lifespan of your CPU over time, uh, especially if you're doing some really aggressive uh, overvolting. So the other method of, of overclocking is to just kind of go f go for a, a more aggressive overclock from the get-go. So I'm going to go with uh, 44. We're going to do 4400 megahertz right here. And then I'm going to back out into the voltage. Obviously, I've done this before, so I'm kind of familiar with what the system's capable of and what the CPU can handle. So under my core voltage, I'm going to change this. You can see it's stock at 0.975. I'm going to do 1.3. Now, the reason I'm doing 1.3 is, is for several reasons. Uh, the first of which is because JJ from ASUS said so. Uh, he actually did say this in the PC DIY video that he did um, during the launch of Haswell E. He basically said 1.3 volts is the most you should go uh, for for certain types of systems, and uh, my system applies to that that field of criteria because I'm doing a lot of encoding and rendering. I'm actually stress stressing my CPU uh, continuously for very long periods of time. So at that rate. 1.3 volts should be the max that you go. Now, if you aren't using uh, your, your system for editing and you're just doing more day-to-day -day tasks or even some heavy gaming, uh, you could easily overvolt this quite a bit further to like 1.4, for example, uh, without too much trouble. But because I am gonna be encoding a lot on this system, I'm gonna keep it at 1.3. I'm not gonna go higher than that. So uh, let's hopefully, hopefully this will work out. I'm gonna save changes and exit. And I'm just going to let the system boot up, and by the time we get into Windows, I should be running at 4.4 gigahertz. And uh, whether or not the system can handle it will depend on if it can pass the stability test that I throw at it. Uh, the stability test that I'm going to be using today is Asus RealBench. Uh, the reason why I'm using RealBench is because it actually does a lot of real-world applications when testing. Unlike Pri something like Prime95, where it's literally just maxing out all the cores at the same time, uh, it doesn't really reflect a representative workload for what you might experience on a day-to-day -day, um, event. All right, so I've opened up the program. I'm gonna go over to stress test, and let's just do a 15-minute run. Uh, I have 16 gigs loaded into this system, so I'm gonna select that, and just give it a second to gather the system information so that it can run the appropriate test. 
and uh, once that's done you can just go ahead and start and it'll do its thing again these are all real world uh, type workloads that it's putting on my CPU. CPU is at 100% usage right now and you can see that we're hitting the 4.4 gigahertz um, overclock that we set with that multiplier of 44. I know it's super tiny text but there it is uh, still with the default bus speed of 100 megahertz. Now so far uh, so good. It doesn't look like we're crashing crashing or anything um, but I'm gonna let this run the whole 15 minutes to see and make sure that we're stable before we try uh, pushing the CPU even further. All right, we're back into the UEFI now because we actually did pass our stress test in RealBench. So I'm gonna go back to the frequency settings and crank this up to 45. So we're gonna go for 4.5 gigahertz here at, uh, again, at 1.3 volts. And I'm gonna see if we can run the same stress test uh, and still be stable. All right, so I'm a little sad that we couldn't hit 4.5 at 1.3 volts, but uh, I guess it's not a huge deal. This just means that I'm probably within the, I don't know, 70 to 80 percentile of Haswell eCPUs that shipped out from Intel. Uh, I think Paul was able to hit 4.6 or 4.7 uh, at 1.3. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure he got a really well bin CPU, so uh, good for him. Paul, you suck for hogging up all the good CPUs. Uh, so I'm gonna have to go back down to 44. Damn numlock! So I'm gonna go back to 44, and then I'm gonna go back into the frequency, I'm sorry, the voltage settings, my CPU core voltage. Now I'm gonna see if I can get away with a lower voltage because that'll save me a little bit of power. So instead of 1.3, let's go 1.295. And I'm gonna run the same stress test. So you can see, for those of you not too familiar with overclocking, it is a very tedious and time-consuming task uh, if you wanna do it all manually yourself, but obviously that's, that's one of the fun things about it is being able to tweak and tune your system uh, and uh, doing a lot of trial and error, seeing what works and what doesn't. But when you find that perfect stable overclock, it's a really good feeling. So let's just jump back in here and see uh, what we can do. All right, so we're about three minutes into RealBench right now, and so far we're looking good. Uh, temperatures right now on our hottest core is 88 degrees Celsius, and I'm not gonna let that bother me. Again, I'm not too concerned about what the temps are in RealBench. I'm more concerned about what I'm gonna be seeing when I'm doing some real world applications. While this is a real world stress test, um, it's it's not exactly, I'm not gonna be running RealBench every time I boot my computer up. I'm gonna be rendering videos, using Photoshop, editing videos and stuff like that. Now that being said, you should still have an adequate cooling solution if you're gonna be putting an aggressive overclock on your system uh, and on your CPU. And speaking of which, I've got a Corsair H100i GTX currently cooling the 5820K in my system. It's a 240 millimeter liquid cooler. Uh, it's done, doing a great job so far and that's also allowed me to push the envelope and, and limitations of the CPU a bit further than if I were using an air cooler, for example, or even a, a liquid cooler with a smaller radiator. All right, so we just finished up our 15 minute stress test in RealBench and we passed. Uh, no crashing, nothing like that, so I think we're good to go. I did want to point out that you guys may have noticed that the speed here was reading 3300 megahertz the whole time during the test, but uh, midway through the test I pulled up CPU-Z and we were in fact running at 4400 megahertz, so I just wanted to get, uh, give you guys some reassurance there. It must just be a glitch with RealBench. Um, aside from that, our max temp was 94 degrees Celsius on the hottest core, which honestly looks pretty alarming, but if there was something horribly wrong, uh, the CPU would have just shut down to prevent any kind of damage from happening to the CPU. So at this point, you could go back into your UEFI, and if your uh, particular BIOS allows it, you can do things like uh, change your, your voltage setting to adaptive voltage, because right now we are at just a fixed voltage. So whether we're under load or whether I'm at a low power state idling, I'm still going to be at 1.295 volts. And that can honestly wear and do some wear and tear on your CPU over time. So switching it to something like adaptive uh, voltage can really help you save some energy and some power and longevity in your CPU as well. And in closing, I just wanted to quickly share some performance numbers with you guys, because when it comes to overclocking your hardware, seeing how much extra performance you can squeeze out of it is what it's really all about. So I've already done two render tests in Adobe Premiere Pro CS6. Uh, they were five minute clips, or it was a five minute clip at 10 1080p H.264 and it had a bunch of color correction filters on it just to make the test a little bit more taxing. Uh, and at the clock, at the uh, stock clock frequency of 3.4 gigahertz, I was able to render the clip in about six minutes and 34 seconds, which isn't too bad. I mean, this is still Haswell E, so even at stock clock frequencies, you're getting pretty good render times. But then after dialing in the overclock of 4,400 megahertz, I was able to shave that down to just five minutes and 15 seconds. And at that point, you're talking almost real-time encoding, right? I mean, that was probably 
uh, almost a minute of render time for every minute of footage. So definitely able to shave down quite a bit there. And when you're talking about longer projects, like when I render an episode of Awesome Hardware, which is sometimes over an hour long, I mean, in the long run, you're saving yourself hours upon hours of encoding time, which is uh, really nice to see. Also did want to point out that the hottest my CPU ever got during the overclocked render test was 78 degrees Celsius. I believe it was on core number four. That one tends to get a little bit hotter than the others. But uh, obviously you can see that's much lower than what we were hitting uh, with the real bench stress test. And again, I think the best way to just test to see how hot your hardware gets is to really just run the applications that you normally run day to day. Uh, it gives you the most accurate representation. It's most indicative of what you're expected to see. But that of course is just what works for me personally. And I guess that's kind of why I wanted to just share this experience with you and kind of just show you uh, what I go through when I overclock my CPU at home. Uh, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, toss me a like on it and feel free to subscribe to the channel for more tech videos coming at you really soon. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.